University Valedictorian has a challenge. What's the challenge? She's unable to speak out of security concerns, according to the university. Put up the picture full mass. USC, University of Southern California, valedictorian, not allowed to speak at graduation. This is a hell of a thing. 2024, valedictorian was denied the chance to give a speech at commencement over what the university calls security concerns. This is fascinating. With a 3.98 GPA, and in recognition of her community service and leadership skills, she is graduating with a major in biomedical engineering and a minor in resistance to genocide. Ansa Tabu Taba Sumu. In an announcement dated Monday, the provost, who's the chief academic officer, Andrew Guzman, said, quote, the intensity of feelings fueled by both social media and the ongoing conflict in the Middle East has created substantial risk relating to security and disruption at commencement. He continued, after careful consideration, we have decided that our student valedictorian will not deliver a speech at commencement. While this is disappointing, tradition must give way to safety. This decision had nothing to do with freedom of speech. There is no free speech entitlement to speak at commencement. The issue here is how best to maintain campus security and safety, period. Now, I've been a university professor since 2016. I've worked at multiple universities and continue to work at multiple universities today. I have seen it all. I have seen known racist come to a campus, even though the majority of the school disagreed, protested, had petitions. It definitely, it definitely created a security issue, a security risk. We've seen people like Kyle Rittenhouse. Be invited to some of the largest universities because of a small student group at said university. And I've said to you before, right here on Indisputable, a president of a college can always cite security concerns to stop someone from being heard on a campus. I said that right here. I had no idea it would be utilized that Trump card, no pun intended, would be utilized to stop the valedictorian from speaking at commencement. They don't use that heavy hammer to stop known racist from coming to the university and speaking freely. But they use it against one of their own students. There's more. The graduate, the valedictorian, Tabasum, in an interview with HuffPost, questioned the university's reason, reasoning and told HuffPost she felt disappointed. She felt let down by USC, quote, I'm surprised that my own university, my home for four years has abandoned me, she said. I was hoping to use my commencement speech to inspire my classmates with a message of hope. She wrote this in her statement, by canceling my speech, USC is only caving to fear and rewarding Hatred, end quote. Her statement is proper, her statement is correct, and her statement is noted. Think about it. She's gone to the college for years. She's connected to the culture of the university. Obviously, the professors, they believe in her. Obviously, the students who support her believe in her. And when she says the university has abandoned me, put up a picture again, because I want to say this, and, and I mean this in, in all due respect of your situation. We support you. That university is not the provost. The provost would like you to think he's the university. He is not. The university is the university. It is your experience, your experiences, your exposures, your environment. I want you to 
always cherish the memories of the real university, the community that proclaims you, protects you, provides for you, the individuals, the professors, the administrators who support you, who pull you to the side and say, listen, I got your back. What they did here was wrong. And I do hope that you still provide a significant speech that we can air right here on Indisputable and echo whatever you choose to say. In a statement published Monday, the valedictorian said that she was not aware of any specific threats against her or the university. And that during a meeting last Sunday, administrators told her that the university had the resources to take appropriate safety measures for my valedictory speech. And that they, uh, but excuse me, that they would not be doing so since increased security protections is not what the university wants to present as an image. Ah, this is about imaging. Okay, this is about how things look. Why can racist people go to your campus? Are you concerned about how that looks? Are you concerned about the image of the university? There's more. Uh, the valedictorian said that she was denied a chance to let others see someone like her give a high profile speech. Okay. And she's Muslim, obviously, someone a representative of communities and of the masses of people who never saw the institution made for them. She told HuffPost, I wanted to offer the hope that. We can succeed at institutions like USC. Okay, put up the picture of the provost. Provost, I know what you're doing, sir. I have peeped your game, I have pulled your card. You simply don't want her to become the face of the university. That's the real reason you're stopping this. It's not security, it's not because you don't want the appearance of security protocol at the college. You don't want it to be memorialized that somebody like this is one of the faces, the leaders, the tapestry of your institution, sir. That is my belief. According to USC's media, Annenberg Media, some students and alumni said that her social media activity, which includes a link to pro-Palestinian page, was anti-Semitic. I didn't know that if you're pro-Palestinian, you, you have to be anti-Semitic at the same time. I didn't realize that was the standard now. There's more. Guzman, however, wrote that this decision was made based on various criteria, which did not include social media presence. The university said it would not be selecting a replacement for the valedictorian at the main graduation ceremony, which is scheduled for May 10th. They'd rather have nobody at all than to put her up in that main position. Uh, Representative Omar has something to say, put it up for a mass. Shameful. This is a direct attack on freedom of speech. I mean directly. She earned her spot after years of hard work and academic excellence. Bigotry towards minority students can't be normalized. Asna, never let their anti-Muslim discrimination dull your shine. Put up the president of the institution, Dr. Carol Folt. Now, Doc, let me say this. To me, you look like a Karen. But see, that would be wrong for me to conclude that. I don't know you. I have not had any interactions with you. You know, that would be discriminatory if I said to the audience, Dr. Carol Folt is probably a Karen. That's not fair to you, doctor. That's not fair to the students under your leadership. You don't want to be othered. Why would you do this to a student? Here's the thing to the student. Let's put her up again. This sister, if you, if you simply do a speech and put that speech on YouTube, I promise you, I will work to make sure it gets over a million views. Please do so. The world needs to hear desperately what you got to say. And the fact that they have now made this an issue, it means people are interested in what you have to say that would have never cared prior to them making you the center of the story. You have a bigger platform now than you did before. Nothing happens to you, dear sister. Everything happens for you. All right, Wozniak, thoughts here. 
I just salute to this young person for having the courage of her convictions. These folks um, want to curtail or censor her speech, her sense for what's right. Um, and she, you know, she bucked against that and she deserves props for it. I think two things saddened me about this. Um, you know, if, if anybody whose memory is long enough to remember around the time of 2003 and the run up to the war in Iraq, um, the authorities basically stamped out any dissent from that war, which we ultimately realized was a fraud perpetrated on us as Americans, trillions of dollars, hundreds of thousands of Iraqi lives later. We know there was no reason to go out there. The place is way worse now than it was when we found it. Um, and, and, and they called any dissent from support for that war. They call those people traitors, literally treason you were committing for speaking up in the name of peace. Um, and I'm sorry, I see a lot of parallels here. Uh, people who are speaking up against the idea that militarism and killing the hell out of people and, and you know, carrying a war against the people, that you would speak against that, that that would make you, you know, valedictorian, can't even speak at USC. That's right. where we're at. You're not allowed to speak against militarism. That's what they're doing this in favor of. This is not about supporting Jewish people worldwide. It's militarism. Uh, the, we need to be able to send as much money, tanks, bombs, as much as we can over there. And that's it. We're stamping out any dissent to that. And I think the worst part about this is the insidious nature of this is, is that it perpetrates a lot of the worst stereotypes that people make about Jewish people and Jewish causes. A lot of the worst anti-Semitism, this idea that they run everything, that they tamp down any dissent, that they're secretly in charge of everything. And when you come down this hard on a 22-year-old at a freaking college— and her speech as valedictorian, that perpetuates those same ridiculous stereotypes. And so, you know, that's what saddens me about this. Yeah, and obviously it breaks the heart of the hardworking student and those who support that student. And I guarantee you there are professors who are, um, who are upset by what has happened here. I'm looking for an update. I mean, something needs to happen here. There needs to definitely be a remedy to this situation quickly.